Using a bus is probably one of the most useful and efficient ways to code in Verilog HDL. But how can one use this bus? My name is Grady, I'm with Simply Embedded, and today I'm going to talk about how to use a bus in Verilog HDL. Additionally, I'll talk about the basics of 7-segment display and show you step-by-step -step how to program one on a Xilinx FPGA. So, let's get started. Before we start, if you're new to FPGAs and you're not sure how to get started with Xilinx FPGA programming, click this card right here. In case you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and make sure you ring the bell to get notifications for future video uploads. Assuming you just want to learn about the 7 segment display and a bus in Verilog, sit back and relax as I'll get into the tutorial right now. Alright, you need to create a new project in Vivado Design Suite, then create a new source file and a constraints file. I'll be using master XDC file for this tutorial. Open up the source file you created. As usual, before starting to write any code, you would need to stop and think what you want to accomplish. In this case, we'll be setting up a 7 segment display. To accomplish this, we need to look at the 7 segment display schematic of this development board. Link to the schematic is in the description below. Open up the schematic now. From the schematic, we can see there are 8 FPGA pin connections on the left side and 4 on the right. Each digit of the 7 segment display has 8 LEDs. For each individual LED, one end is known as an anode and the other as a cathode. As shown in the schematic, connections on the left are called as cathodes. They are connected to each individual LED on each digit. The connections on the right are called as anodes. They are controlling the voltage of all LEDs under each individual digit. The cathodes are connected straight to the 7 segment display module. Although, the FPGA pin connections for anodes are connected to a base of PNP bipolar transistors. Think of the PNP bipolar transistor as a switch that opens up when a high voltage is applied to the base or a one is applied in your code to it. This means that PNP bipolar transistor will be acting as a closed switch when the base is connected to a ground or when a zero is applied on it in your code. Based on this, in order to make the LEDs light up in the seven segment display, we need to create voltage difference across the anode and cathode so that there would be current flowing. To do this, we need to apply zero volts on the base of the PNP bipolar transistors, which will close the switch so that approximately 3.3 volts is applied to the anodes of the LEDs. We then need to apply zero volts to the cathodes so that there would be current flow from the anode to the cathode, which will turn on the LED in the seven segment display. So thinking of our system that we're designing, we will have four buttons as inputs, eight outputs as cathodes and four outputs for anodes. We can type it out exactly as said. Input button, output seven segment cathode and output seven segment anode. Based on this, we only have one input as button, one output for seven segment cathode and one output for seven segment anode. So we are missing several input and output wires. If we write them out one by one, the code will become very inefficient. Thus, to make our code more efficient, we will use buses in Verilog HDL. You can think of a bus as an array in C programming. Essentially, we will create an array of wires that can be used to make connections on your FPGA. Let's look at the syntax on how we can create these buses. For the buttons, we can say bracket, three, colon, and zero, then close the bracket right before the button. Typically, when I'm reading this out loud, I'm saying that the input button goes from 3 to 0. In this case, 3 is considered most significant bit and 0 as the least significant bit when looking from binary perspective. This bus can be broken down to 4 wires. Similarly, the cathodes will go from 7 to 0 and anodes from 3 to 0. Now you can connect the buttons to the anodes using an assign statement. You can do this by saying assign 7 seg anode 0 equals to button 0, then another line for 7 segment anode 1 equals to button 1, and so on for all 4. You could also connect 7 segment anode 0 and button 3 if you want. Anyways, this seems to be a bit inefficient as well. Thus, you can go ahead and just assign 7 segment anode equals to button, 
This way, each wire in the button bus is connected to the same corresponding number in the anode bus. Since the anodes are controlled using buttons, the cathodes will need to have a zero to be assigned to each wire. This can be done as follows. Assign 7 side cathode equals to zero. You may use various ways to assign all cathodes to zero. You can also say that the bus is 8 bits, 8 wires, and define each wire individually to zero in binary. You can do the same using decimal representation by writing D instead of a B and then defining the decimal value you want. Another way is using hexadecimal. Now you can write H instead of D and define the 8 bits, 8 wires and hexadecimal. If you're not sure what is hexadecimal and binary, I'll be making a video about these in the future and I'll link it right here. For now, let's just say that the cathodes are equal to zero. I just wanted to show you that there are other ways to define and assign values in Verilog HDL. Also, if you want to be extremely specific in your design, you can say that the inputs and outputs are wires. You can do this by writing wire right after input or output. Now, set up your XDC file. Make sure that the syntax matches in your Verilog file and the XDC file. Instead of typing out each name one by one, you can use this great tool known as column select. You can click on it and select columns of your code you want to replace at once. I'll do this for anodes and cathodes. Highlight section in front of the anodes and then type the name you want to use. Do the same for cathodes and buttons. Now save your files and generate the bitstream. Connect your device, turn the device on, program the bitstream to the device and test your code. Now you can see that the seven segment display has all LEDs lit. Press the buttons to see PNP bipolar transistor effect. When the button is pressed, the LEDs in that specific digit will turn off because there is no current flow anymore. Well, let's get back into the code and instead of applying a zero directly to the cathodes, let's make it so that you can control the values assigned to the cathodes using switches. Create an additional input for switch that is a bus from 7 to 0. Assign the switch to the cathode, make necessary connections in the XDC file, generate bitstream and program the FPGA. You will be able to control each individual cathode cathode segment on each digit at the same time using switches. Buttons can still be used to turn on or off each specific digit. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Let me know what tutorial would you like to see next by leaving a comment in the comment sections below.